All right. Well, let's get back to this Russia probe we've been talking about already this morning on the show. Let's bring in attorney David Bruno. He's here in New York with us. And in D.C., Andrew Peake, a former U.S. Army intelligence officer. Gentlemen, thanks for being here this morning. We appreciate it. Good Great morning. To be here. Uh, Andrew, I want to start with you. You know, the House Intel Committee really is ramping up this Russia probe. Seven subpoenas, three are focusing on allegations of improper unmasking of Trump campaign officials. Andrew, from your experience in the community, how common is this, or did the Obama administration overstep? Well, the uh, request for Samantha Power and documents relating to U.N. Ambassador Power is extremely bizarre. I I've never heard of anything like that because she is not an intelligence official. In fact, her job really doesn't have much to do with who uh, Russian diplomats are talking to. So it's very, very strange. Uh, I would say this is, I've never seen anything like this. As a former transition official myself, uh, I hope the committee gets the information it needs because this really smacks of political posturing. Could the unmasking, David, be the key to finding out the source of the leaks of all of this information that has been damaging to the Trump administration? Yeah, sure, absolutely. And I love the, the video that you played before the commercial, which was uh, Senator Gowdy questioning John Brennan about this ambassador that potentially unmasked. And at the time of that answer, he said that he had a vague recollection and he wasn't confident. And I guess that's a little snapshot as to why uh, Samantha Powers was mm -hmm. subpoenaed and her information. I think that's very important because uh, Susan Rice has already uh, said that she wasn't going to cooperate with the Senate. Uh, in fact, they wanted to bring her in front of the committee and ask her about the unmasking. So uh, that's another important uh, witness that's going to uh, shed some light about the unmasking. It really will. And keep the conversation going. And maybe more Obama administration officials, may their names may be coming forward in this. I, I want to switch gears, guys. Definitely. And Andrew, you know, you've got uh, former FBI Director uh, James Comey. He could be testifying as early as next week about his conversations with the president. We know that the president has made veiled threats on Twitter in the past, that he may have taped his conversations with Comey. How likely is that? And what do you expect to hear from Comey? What do you think he's going to be willing to say, basically? You know, I actually don't think the Comey testimony is going to be that explosive, simply because mm. he's already reached out to Mueller, the special counselor, mm -hmm. uh, the special investigator about Trump-Russia ties. Uh, and Miller's agreed to deconflict it with what Comey's going to say. Uh, and because the Mueller probe is so broad, uh, into the, these Russia-Trump uh, organization ties. Really, there's not that much that Comey can say in a public session uh, that's going to that's going to move the needle so much because so much of this relates to to what that council is doing. Yeah, David, so I think they're pretty safe, actually. Interesting, David. What do you make of these parameters that Comey set up with Mueller? Yeah, this is this is the important part, uh, ladies, because what Comey actually testifies about is going to be very telling as to what Mueller's investigation is about. Because if he's asked about uh, the intelligence and he's, and he's able to talk about the firing and the mm -hmm. conversations and the memos and things like that, then we might get a spotlight as to what, it's, what is outside of the uh, Mueller investigation. Right. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. I, I really hope we get more details out of Comey. I think it's going to be a very interesting testimony. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Of course, David Bruno and Andrew Peake. Appreciate it. Talk more about this Russia probe. We're joined by former prosecutor David Bruno right here in New York. And in Washington, we have Andrew Peake, former U.S. Army intelligence officer. Good to see both of you again. Good morning. David, I want to begin with you. We are expecting to hear uh, testimony from former FBI Director James Comey next week. A and David, you say on this obstruction of justice issue, there is one question that Comey needs to be asked. And that question is, did Obama ever discuss an FBI investigation? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's understand what happened in the prior administration, because I would bet that uh, President Obama had conversations with Comey about other investigations and maybe even the Hillary investigation. So, so let's see, is it just the Trump uh, allegations or is it potentially another president that had some influence over investigations? Well, you know, and Andrew, to that point, one of the questions Comey's going to be asked is, did President Trump ask you to halt the investigation of meddling of the Russians in the U.S. election? Does he have any protections legally or from the intelligence community? Is there anything that when you, when you serve as an FBI director, there's things that you don't have to, to answer? Is that possible? 
Uh, I don't think so, unless it's classified information. You know, he's signed, uh, he's been essentially read, what you'd call read off the classified programs. They've told him when he left the FBI what he could and couldn't speak about. That's <coughs> common for the intelligence community. But really, I, I think Comey is hamstrung by his May 3rd testimony that there was no political interference. Like, I don't see how he gets around that, even if at this point Democrats want him to get, uh, want him to say that, you know, the president asked you to cut out this investigation to Mike Flynn. Yeah. And, and David, what do you make of what's going on in all of these subpoenas? You have the Democrats wanting to focus on the Russia probe and the Trump campaign's collusion right. with Russia, and you have the Republicans now interested in why names and who unmasks those names of Trump associates. Yeah, right. Uh, obviously, two different uh, focuses. Uh, right. I think what we're going to see uh, when it comes to the Russian interference is going to be a very predictable outcome. Uh, and uh, General Flynn's likely going to invoke his Fifth Amendment right like he did in the Senate. Uh, the interesting issue is now on the unmasking issue and bringing in uh, power and uh, rice and now asking them questions because they previously haven't really testi testified or cooperated. Well, Andrew, you know, we've seen Susan Rice in interviews since she left uh, Washington and, and, and since the inauguration where she has basically denied any involvement. We know that she's been caught in the past, Benghazi, anybody, of not maybe being forthright. Do you think she's going to change her tune now and actually start to own up to what happened when she was there? Absolutely not. I think she'll hold the line to the end. You know, there's no benefit for her to getting wrapped up in this investigation into, uh, into the Trump-Russia collusion and the unmasking, there, the alleged Conclusion. I mean, there, there's no benefit for her, uh, and I, she knows that the Democrats will go to the wall to pro, to prevent her from testifying or prevent harm to her reputation. And I think the trouble would be once she got in front of that panel, there could be all sorts of questions about things like Benghazi that she wouldn't want to answer. Yeah. Well, that's not going to stop the Republicans from asking anyway. It's going to be good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.